In last week's video, I was traveling towards Florence, Oregon on the infamous Pacific Coast Highway and made one last resting stop in Winchester Bay, Oregon at a marina before we started the last leg to Florence. And in typical Pacific Northwest fashion, I woke up to it raining and it didn't seem to stop for an entire week. We had rain, we had hail, we had wind, and we had some more rain and some more hail. But that rain, well, that's what makes this place so Well, good morning there, everyone. It is a very kind of rainy day today. And to be honest with you, it's been cold and rainy and maybe I started this trek up to the Northwest a little too soon, but oh well. I was getting pushed out of California. It was too hot, so it's okay though. It's been enjoyable actually feeling some cooler weather and enjoying this beautiful, beautiful forested area around me. We are headed to Florence. It's a really neat little town with sand dunes and cute little shops and river walk and yeah it's just really really cute and so we're gonna do it today rain or shine. I picked today because supposedly it wasn't supposed to rain as much uh, and we actually might have some sun although it doesn't appear it's out too much like it kind of looks bright back there it's only because of the camera. I have my GoPro camera in case we get rain and this actually works in the rain. It's not such a big deal. And I have an umbrella and we're just gonna do it because that's what life is about, right? Come on, baby, you wanna go for a ride? You gotta put your jacket on. Do you have a little back for sneeze? It's okay, shh. She gets excited. She does this when she gets excited and she shakes. Your jacket's on, good girl, good girl. Shh, shh, okay, shh, swallow, swallow. Good girl. All right, so we're headed over to the sand dunes now. It's only like a couple miles from here. So we're really, really close to the ocean right now. So I know, uh, well, had it been a little bit warmer, we'll see what it's like out there. It might be too windy, but I know Lily will love the sand and uh, just hang out there for a little bit and enjoy a little bit of sun that we're getting. But we're bundled up. We've got lots of jackets. I've got a scarf. This is my puffy vest jacket. I've got a hoodie. Um, I've got more jackets over here. My little Patagonia windbreaker. I think I have a thicker jacket. I do somewhere up there. And scarves. So we'll just layer up if we have to. Shield is dirty. This van needs to be really clean after all of the rain and wind. 
It has really turned out to be a beautiful day. I mean, you can see we've got some stormy clouds over there. That's off to the northeast, but to the west, blue skies. Well, we're over here by the, it's called Siusla, S-I-U-S-L-A-W River. It's uh, beautiful over here. So a couple of years ago, I actually stayed over here in Florence off of this jetty, but it was on the other side over there, hugging the river, and I saw this Navy boat come through here. It was so weird at the time to see it. I'm gonna show you when I go over there, but this actually spills over into the Pacific Ocean. So that's why that Navy boat was able to get through. Looks like we got some crab fishermen over here. I've never seen this before, so maybe they can teach us something. My name is Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hi. Good to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you too. So you're crab fishing today. Yes, a castable crab trap. When you cast it out, it floats down to the bottom. Okay, so what's inside here? Chicken. Chicken? They like chicken, huh? Just raw chicken. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and it floats down to the bottom, and then when it sits on the bottom, it opens up. And then the crab crawl onto it to eat the chicken. And when you reel it back in, wow. it okay. them. Whoa, that was amazing. That was far out there. So now we wait. And do they give you a good fight? Uh, it depends on how the current's pushing. This is like a sail in the water. Oh, okay. So it gets kind of heavy if the current's pushing the wrong direction. That was a big one. Got a lot of males. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at him. And I got one of those green European ones, you know. Hey, Mr. Graham. Yeah, but you're not supposed to. This is oh, wow. Rich's one keeper. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a beauty. It is. It'll yeah. be a good dinner. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> so you just keep them in this like pot of water here? No water. No water, no water at all. No. Okay. Do they die uh -uh. when they're like that? Well, they say. And this is a green European crab. Here, oh, okay. crab in the water. There you go. Yeah, we do. So you measure with this to make yeah, sure it's big so enough. Yeah, so this shell has to be at least this big right here. Okay. Don't go as high. Go for a walk. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. One of the things that I love about this area too is all of this like grass right here. It's just so lush and wild and I don't know. There's something about like, you know, when I was growing up in Texas, we had these very manicured lawns and everything. And then coming to the Pacific Northwest where things just weren't as manicured. It was more wild and beautiful and I don't know, free. You know, freedom's my word. You can hear the tide coming in. Oh my goodness, you should see the sight. I know I should turn the camera around, huh? The wind is blowing a lot, so I can't talk very well with the wind coming right at me. I'm about to turn you around. You're gonna see the Pacific Ocean meets the Sayusla River. Come on, girl. Come, it's your sand. She loves it, she loves it. <laughs> oh, wow. It is so, so beautiful out here. Oh, but very windy and cold. to be out here after all that rain and stuff that we had and the hail. <laughs> oh, I'll take it. We did say this was gonna be an adventure, right? Always an adventure in life. That right there is where the Sayusla River meets the Pacific Ocean. Sayusla River, Pacific Ocean. Oh, and I'm just gonna hide behind this rock over here out of the wind for just a little bit 
<sighs> before we head back. Yeah, tide is definitely coming in, you can see it. See the motion of the water coming in this way? <gasps> There's no water. Oh, he went back under. I missed him. I tried to get closer up, but I had to navigate through all the sand and the rocks and not slip into the water. It's got to be freezing in there. In fact, I saw a kayaker earlier out here with his dog. And I'm like, oh, I hope they have some kind of a wetsuit on to protect them from the water. This is freezing. In the van, let's go. Come on. I should have worn my knit hat out there. It probably would have been a lot better in the wind. All right, we are off to, uh, I think, find something for lunch. Uh, there's a couple of little restaurants over here in the downtown area. Get some food. There's lots of seafood places around here. And uh, yeah. And did you hear my alarm just now? Uh -huh. I installed an alarm in the van. I just came out with a video, which I'll link right here, that talks about the alarm and what it is and why I installed it. It's all part of my van safety video and safety on the road, especially as a solo female nomad. And you can be a male solo nomad too as well uh, doing this. I know all you men out there are like, Amber, we're scared too. I know we all are, we all can be. I don't mean to exclude anybody, it's just that women seem to be the ones that talk about it more than men do so uh, maybe we should change the narrative i don't know what do you think up here we have the Sayus law river bridge it's a drawbridge i like drawbridges we were just over there before and this bridge, of course, goes over the river that we were on. It's beautiful. I love the architecture of it all. We're here at Moe's. It's right on the river. There's actually a ambulance that's back there. You can see um, back there. Uh, I pulled into my spot and there was a man laying on the ground and poor guy, he fell and hit his head. So. He had to call an ambulance to make sure he's okay. He's got a pretty big knot on his head, but uh, they're fixing him up really well. This is cute. I love the view too. So I just set up this really cool new system in the van, it's the alarm system, and check this out. I can pull it up and see in the van. Lily is up in the front seat. And then I have another camera. Here, that's in the back. So I can see the entire van. I cannot tell you the peace of mind that I have from installing that system. So not only do I have cameras, but I also have alarms in there. So yeah, we should have done this a long time ago. Oh my gosh, this clam chowder looks so good. All right, oh my gosh, it smells so good. You can smell the clams and I think they got a little bit of pepper on top. It's steaming. That's how hot it is. Mm -hmm. Verdict is out on the clam chowder. It was absolutely horrible. Hated it. Really, really, really hated it. <laughs> Chips, 
fish, tartar sauce, and you know it, malt vinegar. Oh goodness me, that's so yummy. And on the fries. I know, it's yummy though, you have to try it. One of the questions that I get sometimes is, um, do I miss like being with people or having like a partner to do things with? Yeah, for sure. Totally wish that I had somebody, to, you know, to do this life with. Um, but so far that hasn't been in the cards for me. Uh, so I make do with uh, meeting friends along the way and meeting them at places like this. A lot of people think that, you know, if you're by yourself that you can't go to like restaurants or events or stores or whatever by yourself. But here's the thing, I've been doing this all my life. I remember when I was 21 years old, I wanted to go on a vacation, but nobody could go with me. And so I just decided to do it on my own. And I'd always gone to like restaurants or even movie theaters and stuff by myself because people will say stuff to you about it. Like as if you're, you know, a crazy person for going to some place on your own or, you know, that you don't have somebody to do this with. To me, I feel like, that's not it at all. For me, it's about still wanting to live my life and do things, and if someone can't go with me, I'm not gonna let that stop me. So, a lot of times I just end up doing things on my own. So, that's exactly what happened when I went to Cancun. I booked my trip to Cancun, Mexico when I was 21, back when we actually had travel agents, which maybe we still do, but we used to book all of our travel through travel agents. And then my sister ended up going with me, but I booked everything on my own, and of course my friends and family were like, what, you're going on your own to Mexico? I feel like I'm a strong, confident woman to be able to go out and do these things on my own and I don't really care what people think. That's just me. Lily, what do you think? Would you go on your own? No, I don't think so. You want me there with you all the time, don't you? <laughs> don't you, Mom? Yes. We're actually walking down the street here to see the downtown area. Super cute. Oh, I spy a sculpture. I love that. Look at that. It's a heart. Oh my gosh, look at this tree. Oh, that is super beautiful. It's like pink and look at the flowers on it. Oh my gosh, I love the pottery too. Look at these little leaves. Mark and Grant, where are my leaves by the way? Mm -hmm. And they have mugs. I love these. If I had more space for stuff like that, I would definitely do it because when I was at Mark and Grant's house, I fell in love with all the pottery that they have for just their everyday dishes. It's beautiful and earthy and I just love it. Sorry, I'm looking at all the gorgeous stuff over here. All right, I'm looking at this necklace right here, I think, or this one. We'll see. All right, I settled on this one. Labradorite, right? Yeah. Labradorite. I'll have to tell you all about it when we get back to the van because it's so me. It is amazing what you can find sometimes when you're in these stores. So this stone, Labradorite, I'm one of those that believes in the properties of stones. They have healing energies and properties in them. So I know there's gonna be a lot of people who are like, no Amber, that's new agey. But here's the thing, we're all made of energy. So are rocks and stones and people and God, if you believe in God, universe, we're all made of energy. So I don't know, it's a beautiful thing to me. And if we can find those energies that align with what we need to heal our bodies, I'm all for it. It's a cute little area to sit and rest. And you've got deer, mama deer and baby deer. It's called nursing dough. So one of my viewers, and I apologize to the person who said this to me, and I don't recall your name right now, invited me to do what they do, which is name the sculpture before you actually get to it and then see what the name is. It's kind of a fun little game, so we're gonna start doing that. Nice little old timey building. It's a fish house. Oh, this is a cute little outside eating area. Okay, so the next sculpture I'm naming Celestial dolphin. Is that even a dolphin? <laughs> I don't know. But he sure is cute and colorful. Looks like he has a squid on him. See? Tentacles. Fins. So let's see. 
Oh, it's a sea lion. It's called Dancing with Sea Lions. I was way off. Even wrong mammal. <laughs> uh, I have this beautiful bridge. Again, this is the Sayusla River Bridge. And we have the sand dunes just beyond and over there. But this is cool. I'm fascinated with this painting right here, or this print of these Native American Indians in the river. So as you're looking at what is now named the Sayusla River. It's uh, named after the Sayusla people. They lived along this river, then called Iktat, Iktatyu, Iktatyu, sustainably for thousands of years. Oh, that's amazing. The above painting depicts an upper river camp of the Sayus Law, presumably towards Lake Creek. That's beautiful. I really love that. It's amazing how different it is then versus now. And by the way, this bridge was built during the Great Depression, 1934 to 1936. This old timey picture back in 1936 at the grand opening. Look at all the cars lined up, like old Model T cars. Oh. I think it's time for some coffee. Yeah. Lip balm, anyone? It's literally called offensively large lip balm. Four times larger than any other lip balm. For all you beer drinkers, bush soap. Okay, oat milk chai and an Americano with steamed oat milk. Uh, I love these chunky couches here and wood. This is such a cute place over here. Even look at the galvanized Amber. metal behind me. Oh, right. Thank you. My drink is ready. Mmm, coffee. No caffeine. Cheers, everyone. Oh, it's a bookstore. I love this. Hello. There, he's hiding. I love the smell in here. It's one thing you don't get when you have a Kindle. It's that tactile feel of a book and the scent that comes from those pages. Oh, I miss those days. And these small little bookshops in the Pacific Northwest are just adorable. It's not like your big, huge, like, you know, Barnes and Nobles, which they have their place. Look at these books. All these old, like, jackets. Wow. Oh, just the feel of them. These are so old. The family and the... Oh my goodness, the family and the Miss Rule by Ethel Turner. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't want to handle it too much. It's so old. What else do they have in here? Why is it we always whisper when we're around books? So my favorite is Edgar Allan Poe. Of all of the like American writers where's edgar Allan poe i used to have one of his books that had it's like a huge book it had all of his stories in it oh uh, look what we have here these are adoptable pets just outside of a clothing store actually they're not in the clothing store they're just announcing the adoptions for the oregon humane society but look at this big boy literally meet big boy 13 pounds and look, it's another lily. Looks like a border collie almost. She's done raising her 10 precious babies and is now ready to find her forever home. I do sometimes wish that I had another dog just as a little companion for Lily, but she doesn't really care for other dogs most of the time. Um, but I don't know. I love dogs. I just wish I could adopt more. My uh, goal when I was a kid was to have a farm and just bring all the dogs out there that nobody wanted and let them live out their days there on this farm. Maybe I'll still do it one day. You might even be able to see in the sun how it shines. Isn't that pretty? I like it a lot. I love finding like cool little things like this and 
you know, it's nice to find little trinkets and it works well in the van. This place that I'm at right now is a place that I boondocked several years ago off of this street. Then I just pulled off to the side, just like this car. It was amazing. And somebody told me that this wasn't open anymore for boondocking, but I don't see any signs that say you can't come over here and stay. But it's right off of the Sayusla River, and that's where we were at over there earlier today, on the other side of those dunes. And this winds around to the Pacific Ocean. So it was beautiful. And this is where I saw, <laughs> someone was talking. This is where I saw that Navy, like submarine ship thing that came through here. It was crazy. It woke me up out of a dead sleep because it just had an interesting noise to it that I'd never heard before. And it was like eerily, like foggy out here. And I was one of the only people out here. So it was interesting to watch. Well, I'm gonna check to see if those signs are still here because this is on iOverlander and someone marked it closed. I'm gonna go check. Oh, there it is right there. No camping or overnight parking, darn it. It is home sweet home over here. I'll show you around the campsite. I haven't done that yet, actually. So we have this beautiful, beautiful site over here. I have never stayed in a site that has this many trees in it. It's just incredible and they're tall too, look at that. So here's the site, it's a pretty big site. Got a little fire pit over here that I haven't used yet because it's been so rainy. My wood that I haven't used because it's been so rainy. <laughs> my rug that's got crap all over it. I'm really not complaining, it's beautiful. But look at this, I'm backed up to all of these beautiful trees with this moss. It's pretty. This is a pro tip for you guys. I put a leveler right where my tire should rest so that when I back into the site, you know exactly where I'm supposed to be and I know that I'll be level and I know that I'll line up perfectly with my mat out here. Which I did. It was perfect. Is that good? You done? You still have food in there, Lily. It is time for a movie and some popcorn. And I did get some, by the way. Ugh. This Skinny Pop, my favorite brand. Literally, this is just the regular, nothing on it, nothing. It's amazing. We are, we as in, you, a lot of you have asked me who we is. We is me and Lily. She's my family, so I say we. Um, Lily and I are gonna watch a movie. I don't know how much she's gonna watch the movie, but I will be watching the movie. Um, actually, it's a TV show called, what about Pam? Have you guys seen that? This is Renee Zellweger. Can you believe that? Renee Zellweger, they put a lot of makeup and prosthetics and stuff on her face. Uh, but it's a really good show. It's on Hulu, if you haven't had a chance to watch it. Uh, I'm not being paid by Hulu to talk about this, but I don't know, I like the show, so. All right guys, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to get more videos just like this. I'm traveling up to the Pacific Northwest uh, for this season, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Also going into Canada and British Columbia and doing some boondocking there, I'm excited. Haven't been to this particular area in the van boondocking. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a good night.